Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Gene Kim. I am the National Program Leader for Aquaculture at USDA NIFA. Uh, we're the National Institute of Food and Agriculture. Um, I just want to uh, go quickly through some slides that I think are of relevance to this group. Uh, and I know we're a little behind, so I'll try to uh, pick up the pace a little bit. Uh, but but uh, I want to thank the hosts for uh, inviting and uh, allowing me to see this interest in uh, shrimp farming. So I just want to cover uh, uh, three quick topics, a uh, quick overview of my agency, NIFA, uh, an overview of our sister agency, uh, Agriculture Research Service, and their aquaculture program, and then just speak to a few federal updates uh, uh, that might be of interest to this group. So my agency is the uh, primary extramural funding arm for food and agriculture. Uh, we're about a $1.6 billion agency. Uh, we have a mixture of uh, both competitive and capacity funds uh, that fund uh, the land-grant system. Our uh, approach is an integrated research education extension approach. Uh, we, uh, this is the, uh, uh, the approach that has uh, transformed American agriculture, and uh, uh, the land-grant system is the envy of the world. We have a wide variety of both uh, capacity programs. Uh, those are uh, determined uh, by formula based on the amount of agriculture in the state. Uh, they fund uh, folks at land-grant universities like uh, Kentucky State, Purdue, uh, Auburn, and others to work on uh, uh, a wide variety of topics, including uh, shrimp aquaculture. Uh, the other uh, big portion of our uh, program is the competitive grants uh, we have a wide variety of uh, grant programs from the very basic science uh, to the more applied questions uh, that are of interest to uh, today's uh, problems for industry. Uh, capacity funding uh, uh, goes out in a variety of uh, uh, manners. Um, and this is mostly relevant to the uh, administrators in, in the room. Uh, and this is the land grant network uh, based uh, out of uh, uh, both 1862, uh, the 1890, uh, and the 1994 uh, land-grant universities uh, around the country. So I'm just going to quickly uh, go over just uh, the first three of these and then just talk about some of the opportunities uh, uh, that are more industry-focused. Uh, and then uh, we have a variety of programs uh, in addition to those that, that are eligible for aquaculture uh, that I won't cover, but I just want to give you a quick overview of some of our programs. Um, if, if you look at the uh, uh, five-year average of our aquaculture investment at NIFA, it's about an 18 to 20 million dollar investment across a wide variety of species, uh, including uh, shrimp. Uh, but we, uh, we take a very broad portfolio approach uh, to fund a lot of species. Uh, most of our research is devoted to uh, reproduction, growth, uh, nutrition, uh, animal health issues, uh, production systems, and genetics. Uh, to a lesser, lesser manner, uh, we have uh, product quality and marketing and economics research funded by my agency. I'm just going to go through uh, three uh, programs that we offer. Um, uh, this one's closed now, but uh, in the springtime, we have a $1.2 million uh, research program specific to aquaculture. Uh, addressing uh, constraints to the industry, uh, focusing on four topic areas, uh, genetics, disease, production systems, and economics. Uh, one that uh, may be of interest to folks in this room in particular is the Small Business Innovation Research Program. Uh, this is a phased program. Uh, phase one is a, a relatively quick proof of concept uh, if you have an idea uh, that you feel is innovative for the entire uh, shrimp farming industry. Um, we can fund up to eight months, up to $100,000 for you uh, to do that. Uh, phase two is uh, uh, open only to phase one winners. Uh, so that's where you take the technology from your phase one project and ramp it up to the uh, commercial scale. So this is one of our programs that's only open to uh, uh, US for-profit small businesses. Um, we offer commercialization assistance programs uh, for both phase one and phase two. Uh, this one is open right now. Um, the deadline is in late October. Um, so the, the success rate for phase one is about 15%, one five. Um, so it's fairly competitive. 
at, phase, at the phase two level, it jumps up to 50, 50 uh, percent. Uh, and th that's primarily because the universe of applicants for phase two is only phase one winners. Uh, we have 10 different topic areas. The ones of interest to, to this group would probably be aquaculture as well as small and mid-sized farms. Uh, the difference between those two is uh, my aquaculture topic area um, deals primarily with the development of new technology. And uh, um, the small and mid-sized farms uh, topic area uh, deals with the uh, uh, transfer of current technology. Uh, so there's a couple awards that we funded in my uh, program uh, related to shrimp um, for a, uh, both a uh, pond-based uh, system and development of an uh, um, uh, indoor uh, uh, shrimp system. Um, on the small and mid-sized farms uh, uh, side of things, uh, uh, it's not, not related to shrimp, but uh, one example of uh, that uh, topic area, if you look up on our website or look up on the, on the web, uh, Ripple Rock Farms in Fraseyburg, Ohio, uh, that's a farm that wanted to uh, transfer their technology to grow the industry, and, and they're a tilapia grower. They grow uh, recirculating uh, RAS tilapia. And if you look on their website, you know, you'll see how to order tilapia and how to start their own sort of franchise model. And, and that was their idea of an innovative way to transfer the technology uh, that, that they've learned. And I think their, their website tagline is, we've made the mistakes so you don't have to. So uh, through this innovative tra franchise model that we funded through the small and mid-sized farms, they were able to uh, come up with this uh, franchise model that uh, provided this package of uh, a manual, con uh, manual business plans, uh, consulting help, uh, uh, marketing programs, and uh, uh, collective buying power. So, so that's another example of how, uh, as a group, uh, 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 one or a consortium of you can grow this industry. Uh, we have another program called the Beginning Farmers and Ranchers Development Program, uh, which is not open to individuals, but it's open to uh, organizations, um, uh, partnerships of public-private groups uh, to do a similar thing, to provide technical assistance, training, uh, for new entrants into shrimp farming. Uh, real quickly, uh, we have a regional aquaculture centers program. Uh, there are four, uh, there are five uh, uh, centers, and uh, this is one opportunity to have industry-driven priorities within uh, uh, this program, and uh, you're part of the Southern Regional Aquaculture Center. Uh, the contact would be Jimmy Avery down at Mississippi State. Uh, this is uh, somewhat unique in, in uh, in that the Industry Advisory Council works with uh, researchers and extension agents and really generates the problem statements. Uh, and in turn, in the review process, the Industry Advisory Council has a role uh, in determining which projects get funded. So uh, this is one of our programs that's quite responsive to industry needs um, and an opportunity to get involved. Uh, just a quick overview of uh, uh, ARS research programs. Our sister agency is uh, primarily intramural scientists. Uh, they have uh, labs and units all over the country. Uh, they have about uh, 41 scientists at about uh, almost a $30 million budget. Um, they work on both freshwater and marine systems and, and speaking with the uh, program leader for uh, ARS is uh, aquaculture. Probably the most relevant is the, uh, for shrimp farming is the Auburn uh, unit which specializes in uh, uh, aquatic animal health issues. Uh, so if there are any researchable topics uh, related to shrimp health, uh, probably the Auburn unit would be uh, one uh, to, to go through. Their uh, approach is a little different. Uh, they fund fewer species. Uh, they can, they uh, fund long-term research for industry. Um, and they uh, take slightly higher risks than industry um, but unlike the long species list that we have, uh, their, their list is uh, shorter than ours. Uh, so these are, uh, these are their roles. They work with stakeholders. They conduct uh, both research and technology transfers. And uh, um, they, uh, they complement industry needs to uh, help develop uh, existing commercial aquaculture species. Um, the, the mo most of their uh, research is on uh, 
um, uh, these five topic areas. Um, breeding, reproduction, and genomics, nutrition, animal health, production systems, and a little bit toward product quality. Uh, and as I mentioned before, the, the list of species that they work on is uh, a shorter list of uh, current uh, commercial species uh, in production now. Uh, we held a variety of, of listening sessions uh, this summer. Um, um, probably shrimp would fall into general aquaculture. Um, there's still an opportunity to uh, provide some additional input uh, if, uh, if members uh, feel that there are research needs. We, we heard a few uh, uh, for shrimp, uh, some uh, late mortality issues, uh, some interactions with toxic algae, um, the need for on-demand feeding, and uh, more research into uh, formulation of uh, artificial seawater for uh, many stages of shrimp. So uh, if, if you have any uh, additional comments, uh, please let us know. So uh, Congress in the 80s had the uh, wherewithal to, to come up with this uh, uh, National Aquaculture Act and, and uh, develop an interagency working group on aquaculture. And the purpose of this group is federal coordination on all issues uh, across that complex uh, maze of federal agencies. So we encourage uh, joint planning and uh, collaboration among our federal partners. And here are a few of our uh, uh, recent uh, and historical task forces. Uh, we, we address uh, research and development, regulations, uh, animal health, um, and, uh, and a variety of other topics through this, uh, in this group. Uh, a couple updates from my colleagues at other agencies. Uh, USDA APHIS uh, is, uh, at least from the veterinary services, uh, they are responsible for uh, animal health, uh, primarily for uh, certification for export uh, purposes. Uh, uh, they don't certify for uh, 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 SPF or APE status, um, but uh, uh, they do have requirements for pathogen testing primarily for exports. Um, and just a reminder that uh, uh, the, the list of reportable shrimp pathogens is the same as those listed by OIE. Um, and it was mentioned before, uh, disease issues. Um, you know, they've been working on this uh, commercial aquaculture health program standards. And, and that's sort of a, a non-regulatory framework uh, to address uh, uh, animal health issues, primarily for trade, uh, but a, a team approach um, uh, to do that. Uh, and that's one thing that they would be interested in, in uh, talking about uh, to apply for shrimp aquaculture. Um, and the contact is uh, Kathleen Hartman uh, within APHIS. Something to keep on your radar. Um, um, over at uh, NOAA in the NOAA Fisheries uh, uh, Department. Uh, there is an overall effort to address uh, illegal, unreported, and uh, uh, well, uh, IUU uh, uh, issues. And uh, there's a seafood import monitoring program that has been established. And uh, that is a requirement for import of uh, a variety of spe fish species. Uh, Shrimp and abalone was uh, uh, given sort of an extension uh, until the end of this year, um, but our current appropriations bill uh, directed NOAA uh, to start um, these last two species uh, being included in the, in the shrimp import monitoring program. So uh, the most important uh, line here is and to, the, and to establish a domestic aquaculture traceability program for these species. Uh, so that is uh, uh, in the works, um, there probably will be a proposed rule out later this year. Uh, they also uh, have some uh, need for pilot testers probably for when that uh, rule comes out. Um, and it will be a reporting system uh, for uh, produ all producers of shrimp above uh, uh, some minimum threshold of, uh, of sales. Uh, if you have questions, uh, Celeste LaRue is a contact within NOAA, and others like Dr. Ray and, and others will uh, keep you informed. So um, I just want to thank you uh, for listening. Uh, we also, for those uh, who are interested in getting those updates about some of those federal issues or opportunities, we manage a, an AquaContacts aquaculture listserv uh, where we send out uh, research opportunities, job opportunities, uh, workshops like this one, or any, any opportunities to input uh, on federal 
uh, regulations. Uh, uh, so if you're interested in joining that uh, listserv, we don't, we don't spam you with a bunch of uh, um, too much. Um, so it's all opportunities for you to um, provide feedback uh, for these efforts and to uh, hear about uh, issues of relevance to aquaculture. So thank you very much.